Welcome back everyone, it's Charlie. This will be my new Justice League Snyder Cut deleted scenes video. Zack Snyder just had a big Snyder Con and revealed a bunch more deleted scenes and extra footage that didn't make it into the theatrical version or at least the final version of the Justice League Snyder Cut. It was really more of a home video release but it has screened in some theaters since then. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. If they reveal more deleted scenes like Ben Affleck was talking about his version of the Batman movie, I might also do a separate video about that too at some point. Usually when he does these Snyder cons, he'll reveal like really cool lore details and things that didn't make it into the final cut. One of the biggest reveals that he made at this latest Snyder con this past weekend was that during all the flashbacks, the lore scenes, when they would have been showing the gods going to war with Darkseid, telling more of this ancient history on Earth from 10,000 years ago and longer. And as part of that, they were going to explain that Wonder Woman's biological father, Zeus, Greek god of lightning, also kind of like the god of gods, or at least that Greek pantheon of gods, would have also secretly been a Kryptonian living on Earth for tens of thousands of years. A Kryptonian? Yes. So that Wonder Woman's powers, anyway, you could sort of see where that's going, you know? Because, you know, the whole thing of like whether or not magic and the gods, you know, there's a version where like, okay, that's cool, I guess. But like, you know, there's also the more sort of scientific kind of, you know, you have like a mythology built up of like, why, where do gods come from? Like, what is that about, you know? And you Ares was the one that caused the scout ship to crash. Yeah. And be in the ice. Yeah. What? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He killed his crew. Yeah. So, Why, you can't just throw that out there. You can. <laughs> so instead of saying that he was an actual celestial god, like the Wonder Woman comics, they would have said that all of his powers evolved the same way that Superman's powers work because of his Kryptonian DNA, just living in Earth's system, in the soul system. Like heat vision, flight, super strength, super speed, super hearing, super senses, just in general. And tangentially as a result, because this was all for the purpose of changing Wonder Woman's backstory, Wonder Woman would have been half Kryptonian, kind of like Superboy. And that was going to be Zack Snyder's way of saying that's where her powers came from and why she was so similar to Superman, why their powers were similar in some aspects. Here's the thing about that, like immediately people will think, wait a minute, Superman can't generate lightning from his body. We've never seen any Kryptonians that I can remember from the comics that have that power either. Zack Snyder didn't really clarify this particular point, but I think the idea is that because Zeus passed all of his abilities to Wonder Woman through his DNA, like literally through his DNA to his child, they would have just explained that in the Snyder verse of continuity, like in his universe of movies, that was just one of the powers that some Kryptonians could develop naturally given enough time, like the powers that Zeus had biologically evolved slightly differently from Superman's powers because they're different people, even though it's not quite that way in the comics. In the comics up to this point, pretty much all Kryptonians, no matter which family they come from, no matter how young or old they are, tend to have the exact same powers. Like Zod and Superman, for instance, any other Kryptonian that came to Earth, all would have exactly the same powers. And it sounds like Zack Snyder just planned for that to be different. He went on to say the idea with Zeus's backstory, like his secret history, is that 20,000 years ago, 10,000 years before this Dark Side War, during Krypton's Age of Expansion, when Jor-El was teaching Superman their people's history in the Man of Steel movie, Zeus had been one of the Kryptonian explorers. His ship and the other Kryptonians that were part of his crew crashed in the Arctic on Earth. Long ago, in an era of expansion, our race spread out through the stars seeking new worlds to settle upon. The scout ship was one of thousands launched into the void. And Zeus's ship would have been the Kryptonian ship that Superman found in the Man of Steel movie. And to explain the other dead Kryptonians Superman found like the other bodies, they had initially planned on saying that it was Ares who caused that war between the gods, but it was really between the Kryptonians' crew members. Had they actually wound up doing things that way, the story that Hippolyta would have told to young Wonder Woman about the war between the gods, their backstory, would have obviously been a lie. But in order for the timeline to work, they would have had to explain that Ares didn't kill the other Kryptonian crew members until after the Dark Side War. So they were on planet Earth for a long time because they said the Kryptonian ship was over 20,000 years old. Themyscirans are born, and then after the Dark Side War, Ares then rebels against the other Kryptonians, so to speak, or in this version, they would have been Kryptonians. Then Zeus dies, and Ares goes into hiding. That would have also have meant that it was Kryptonian technology that Zeus used to create Themyscira and cloak it from the rest of the world, and basically meant that all the Themyscirans would have been low-level Kryptonians in some way. Getting to the Game of Thrones of it all, like you're kind of doing the math in your head, like, wait a minute, Hippolyta was already Kryptonian, all Kryptonians on Earth descended from Zeus. 
I'm assuming this meant that Hippolyta would have been one of the subsequent daughters from one of Zeus's other many offspring. Remember, he's 20,000 years old, so he probably has a lot of children over these years, including the idea that all the Themyscirans had part of his DNA, meaning that Zack Snyder was planning on going full Game of Thrones Targaryen with people marrying within their bloodline. Making all those Game of Thrones jokes, Zack Snyder said that when they were developing this, the studio made them take it out of the movie because they hated the idea of Wonder Woman as a Kryptonian, which was a huge change from the comics, obviously. He explained his reasoning for wanting to make Wonder Woman a Kryptonian secretly was to say that there were no actual gods who existed, like there were no gods, just ultra-powerful evolved beings. In the way Q from Star Trek isn't meant to be a god, he just seems like one, the Q Continuum are just a race of highly evolved beings with godlike powers. I'm not a big fan of the idea of making Wonder Woman a Kryptonian, so I am glad that they cut that out of the movie. Based on the other stuff that Zack Snyder said at his Justice League Snyder Cut panel, had he gotten to make Justice League 2 and Justice League 3, all the other spin-offs that they had planned at the time, they would have covered more of that alternate Zeus Kryptonian backstory in some of the other spin-offs by the end of Justice League 3. But the idea is they didn't write the first Wonder Woman movie till after they'd gotten the notes from the studio to get rid of that Zeus backstory changes with all the Kryptonian stuff. Zack Snyder was heavily involved in the making of that first Wonder Woman movie, if you didn't realize. He even has a cameo during it. That's why the visual style, just like the tone of that Wonder Woman movie, seems very similar to the other Snyderverse movies. He largely already parted with the studio by the time Wonder Woman 1984 came around, so he wasn't really involved with Wonder Woman 1984, which is why it seems so different. But when they started making that first Wonder Woman movie, they had already changed Zeus's backstory to be more comic book accurate. So when Hippolyta is telling the younger Wonder Woman the backstory of the gods, they didn't have to make any changes to that lore. It was always like that for that particular movie. It sounds like all the Zeus Kryptonian stuff had started when they were first developing the Justice League movie in the Justice League sequels while they were still in the middle of working on Batman v Superman. The way that Zack Snyder explained is that because of the way the studio contracted with him to develop their Justice League connected movies, that started before he started making Batman v Superman. Like, they were making Batman v Superman with the expressed idea that they were going to be making all these Justice League sequels. So when they were making Batman v Superman, they began creating this larger mythology that they'd cover through all the Justice League movies and the other spinoffs behind all these characters, like including Darkseid, the anti-life equation. There's a lot of untold story. Like Zack Snyder always hints about stuff like, oh, we had a lot of ideas about what we're going to do with the anti-life equation. But because it was so much world building and mythology that they had developed at the time, so many ideas, it would have taken them a bunch of spinoffs to also cover all these backstories. He's already revealed what the majority of the Justice League 2 and Justice League 3 movies would have been, released all the stories and the concept art. I did a giant video for that a little while ago, so I'll add a link for that at the end of this and down in the description below, because it gets really crazy. Like, there's some controversial stuff that he wanted to get into, particularly the whole Batman Lois Lane storyline. The other really interesting thing that Zack Snyder said as part of this completely separately is part of Batman's backstory with the dead Nightwing, Robin, his backstory with the Jared Leto Joker, is that he didn't want to reveal too much of what happened between them because it was a chance that he could tell that story in the future. So everybody naturally was like, wait a minute, what does that mean? Make of that what you will. As far as I know, James Gunn has no plans to do any kind of Elseworlds stories with Zack Snyder, at least right now. That could always change, but the idea is that if Zack Snyder ever did continue any of his story threads in any kind of medium, like if he did a comic book or really anything, based on the upcoming plan for how all the DC movies connect, they treat all the Snyderverse story as an Elseworlds story. Right now, the Flash movie, doing a version of Flashpoint with the Snyderverse characters in Michael Keaton's Batman, is meant to sort of usher in the new era of DC movies, and they're explaining because of that Flashpoint twist. That's why everything changes. I'm sure there's going to be a ton of questions about the new continuity, how everything works. Don't worry, as we start getting more footage for the Flash movie, of course I'll do more videos for that. Let me know what you think about that radically different Zeus backstory, though, about making him a Kryptonian. I might do a separate video for Ben Affleck's Batman movie. He also was at the Snyder Con talking about his version of the Batman movie. Deathstroke was going to be the villain, and he revealed some of what's going on with the villains and what his plans for that movie were going to be. Guardians of the Galaxy 3 is also coming out this week. Be sure to go see it when you have a chance. My full post credit scene video, my full Easter eggs and breakdown videos will start posting later this week after the movie comes out. There's a lot of stuff that we have to talk about. Also, later this week is Star Wars Day. They're releasing the new Star Wars Visions episodes. I'll try to do an episode video for all those. There might be some more cool trailers and stuff later this week. We might get a new Loki Season 2 trailer pretty soon, too. Everyone click here to learn about Star Wars plans for Cal Kestis in live action. And click here for my new Flash movie trailer with a bunch more Ben Affleck Batman. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.